Is how you plot not working out for you? Trust me, I understand. I have tried so many different ways to plot a novel and write it, and they never worked out for me. I thought I was destined to be a panster who got nowhere. And then I started doing what I'm going to show you I do today. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about how I personally plot. We're going to be talking about beats and pinch points. And lastly, I'm going to show you a general idea of how I structure scenes into chapters. Now next week, Tuesday, I'm going to drop a video showing you guys exactly everything I look into when it comes to making chapters. And before we get started real quick, I want to introduce myself. My name is Zoe Marley, if you've never heard of me. And my channel is dedicated to bringing you guys 50 videos on how to write a novel. I also want you to know that this is my second time filming this specific video because yesterday, me and my partner, AKA my son, we tried to do this and boy, we had so much fun. You wouldn't believe, we, we, in fact, I might make it into some B-roll just so you can see how ridiculous we were yesterday. But you would have gone through about 30 minutes of giggling to get about 15 minutes of value. So I just want you to know that I'm fired up, I'm ready to get through this. And if it seems like I'm like talking way faster than normal, it's because I've been through this already once. <laughs> so let's get into it. So the first beat is the opening image, AKA the ordinary world. Now, if these are new terms to you, my last few videos went over different ideas behind plotting. So you can find more information. I'm gonna put a card right here. So if these are new terms, click on that card, come back to this video after you watch it. And this is gonna make a lot more sense because I'm not gonna repeat the same information, what is what, how is what. We're just gonna go straight into act one and personally how I plot my story. So for the opening image, I wanted to get a few immediate things across. So the first thing that I wanted to get across was that it was kind of like this 1300 Scotland meets 1300 Americas. And I mean, I'm talking about North, Central, South Americas, all of it. The next thing I wanted to make sure got into my opening image is that this is a dark fantasy. So it's going to kind of show readers, hey, this is what you're in for. If this is too gory, this might not be the book for you. I obviously set the tone, right? So I'm showing that I'm, I'm writing in third person limited. It's going to be a fairly fast paced novel. I don't spend too much time with exposition. You know, just kind of the obvious stuff that for the most part, you've already figured all of that out, but you need to be intentional about making sure it gets into this opening image. So in future videos, I'm going to be dissecting how to start a great first chapter. And I'm taking my own advice. I'm starting with a ton of tension. So my opening image, my ordinary world is in the middle of war. My main character walks into camp defeated, full of self-doubt, and then walks up to dear old dad, AKA the chief, and has to report her failures. It is a very emotionally charged scene. It shows what goals my character has. It shows what she truly wants. And then also she just gets slapped in the face with what it means if she fails. So there are a few questions I want you to ask yourself before you start writing this specific scene. And that is, where is your character really? And are you making any false promises? So what I mean by that is, did you write 800 words of a dream and your character wakes up and is in their boring reality? You have to be very careful with situations like this. I believe that anything can be done well. I've seen most tropes done really, really well. But what I don't want you to do as an author is I don't want you to go out into the world and your first time your reader gets to meet your work, you don't hold up your promises. So if you give them this crazy vivid dream that's this amazing world and then throw them into 10,000 words of this ordinary world that just is not exciting, 
You just made a false promise and your reader isn't going to trust you. Next is I want you to make sure that during all of the scenes, there should be one of three things. There should either be action, tension, or curiosity. If you can start off a scene by bringing questions into a, into your reader's head, that is going to be incredibly impactful. And I would even say as impactful as getting them excited with action or showing some kind of nice heated tense moment. Lastly, I want you to really focus. Are you telling us what is going on or are you showing us what's going on? And so the next step is theme stated. So if you have not seen my video on theme, it is right here. It will also be in the description below. So for this specific one, I took all of my advice in my theme stated video and it was super easy for me to apply. I knew within about the first page of the book that I was going to hit my main character really hard with her theme. And so she's arguing with her ex-boyfriend and you know, they just kind of have this relationship where they kind of bicker, almost like brothers and sisters, which is why they didn't really work out. Anyway, in the middle of this kind of argument, he's like, are you ever going to be at peace with the idea that you're mixed? I mean, boom, right? That's hard hitting. And she's going to just wave it off because they're fighting. And she's, she's not thinking clearly when they get into these bickering sessions. All right, so the next one is the setup. Now I have personally broken my setup down into three main scenes and we're gonna go into them. Okay, so before I do this, I am not trying to self promote all of my videos, but I strategically made my videos so that you start at video one and you continue to grow with the video. So when I'm saying, oh, here's a card here, here's a card there, it's not that I'm just trying to make you watch all of my videos and there's this like shameless self promotion, but it's because I put a ton of detail, very specific detail into these videos and they all build up to this specific video. With that being said, this specific video went into something that I call the golden ticket. If you haven't seen it, I think it was like my second or third video that I put out there and it is hands down the best piece of writing advice I have ever received in my life. And in it, I talk about this golden ticket. I talk about your character's flaws. And this is where we're gonna see all of that conversation actually being implemented into the story is during the setup. So this says, terrified, tired, entitled as a failure, Naeli refuses to ignore war and simply go home. Her resourcefulness leads her to the enemy camp where she comes face to face with the tainted, a seemingly human race that has exhausted all hope of peace for her people. So that's the scene. That's where we are, but we have to give her the golden ticket. She thinks that if she can prove herself, she will be happy. So she is constantly trying to prove herself and here she is. She has made it to where she wants to go and it is very, very, very dangerous territory. But if she's successful in this one venture, AKA I'm giving her that golden ticket, if she's successful in that venture, she alone is going to turn the tides of this war. So for this scene, these specific things that are very, 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 very important. One, we need to make sure that by this point, or we need to keep building into this point during this scene is how Naeli is inches away from losing everything because of her flaw. So if her flaw is trying to prove herself, she's, she is inches away of complete destruction because she has just literally walked into a war zone single-handedly. She is not a warrior and she is going to walk into this and attempt to save the day. The next scene requirement is that in some way the antagonist or the enemy forces really need to be shown, right? You need to give your reader a taste of what the bad guys are. So literally she's marching into the enemy territory. We're going to see them. And then next offer your character that golden ticket. She wants to prove herself. She walks into the enemy territory and then everything that is going to save her people is right in front of her. 
she just has to get it. Now, when you're reviewing this, questions to ask yourself in the first part of this setup, have you intentionally made a really strong promise to your reader? Have you put a good hook in there that is truthful to your story? Next is you want to leave this specific scene with a cliffhanger. So you do everything, you give them the golden ticket, they go after that golden ticket, and then what? Give it a glimpse, cut it off. Next is a really important question. Is your character making these decisions or is your plot pushing these decisions on your character? Your character's flaw is so imperative to make sure your character is doing things. And if it's not your character flaw, it's an obvious showing of what your character truly wants. If they want something, they go after it. This needs to be about your character. If plot is pushing your character to do things, your protagonist loses all credibility. And I promise you, I have read very many smart protagonists that do dumb things because otherwise the author wouldn't have a story to write. No, don't, don't do that. Your character needs to be in control of their life and they need to be making decisions based off of what they want or because they are a severely flawed individual. And it's even better if you can make the two match. Part two of the setup. We talked about giving them a golden ticket. We talked about leaving it on a cliffhanger. Well, part two is probably going to be the shortest scene or chapter in your entire story because what you're gonna do, you're going to write one scene, lots of action, lots of tension. It's going to be emotionally charged. So for my character's failure, this is you've given them the golden ticket and now you're gonna make them fail because the best writing advice I've ever heard has said to do this and I love it and I'm sharing that advice with you. So Naeli decided to do everything she could to grab her golden ticket, and she fails miserably. That failure cost her. So for the scene requirements, this is a short scene. It is action-packed, high stakes, and emotionally charged. The scene is only about the failure and everything surrounding that failure. So the last part of my setup before I actually get into how I did it. I'm going to explain something that may make your manuscript very different than mine. I write from multiple points of views. So in some ways, my actual story per character is shorter than if I were writing one character's point of view. It is one of my longer chapters, but because I really don't have the liberty to make a 200,000 word story, I had to kind of compact this all into one and I was able to do it well. It didn't start off that way. I had to edit it like two or three times, but eventually I got it down. It's still a pretty long chapter. But if you're sitting there and you have one character and only one viewpoint that you're telling, this can be cut into more than just the three steps that I'm doing. This particular part right here can be cut into two or three additional scenes. The third setup, which is my last one, is going to have the call to adventure, the refusal of the call, the supernatural aid, and the inciting incident all together into one chapter. So the inciting incident is that Naeli is back in her ordinary world. And again, she's seeing herself as a failure. Reluctantly, she quits chasing after her four lie ways and she begins to accept her life as an iron foot. So those are the two races she's mixed, right? Then my, my, my romantic inciting incident happens. Romance sparks, which makes accepting the iron foot ways easier. It gives us a glimpse of how right the characters would be for each other, yet it also shows them struggling with something that is holding them back from being romantically involved. The next one is my call to adventure and refusal. I grouped them up together. So then my call to adventure happens. She, Naeli is approached by a soothsayer. She senses something evil and demonic lurking within the staff that the soothsayer is offering her and she rejects the offer. And symbolically, she's also rejecting her four lie ways. 
And lastly is the supernatural aid. So the staff actually forces itself onto her and begins to warn her of things to come. That leads us into our catalyst. The catalyst is also kind of known as the first pinch point, in my opinion. So if you are a fan of story engineering, I've got it down below in the description. If you haven't read it, my number two best writing book in all of the world. I think it is a fabulous book. So in the last setup, staff takes over, kind of possesses her, forces her to see certain things. And now we're in the catalyst phase. So based on the knowledge that the staff gave her, Naeli strategizes her father's men. The attack happens and she has made one lethal mistake. The antagonist or enemy comes full force attacking Cobb, which is her hometown, raising the stakes and Naeli actually discovers their true intentions here. For those of you that are writing a series, this is also something that I did just like a little bit of cool foreshadowing. I not only put the main enemy there, I also have every single enemy for the rest of the series have an appearance some way, somehow. So the very last plot point of act one is called the debate. This is also known with the hero's journey, which my video on the hero's journey is right here also in the description. It is also considered the point of no return and crossing the threshold. Naeli tries to move forward from her failures, but her family attempts to take advantage of her specific situation and tries to use her as a pawn. This makes her decision very clear. After the betrayal, which was a huge betrayal, she sees the staff as the lesser of the two evils. She makes the decision, not the plot, she makes the decision to leave. So before I get into how I kind of piece scenes to make a chapter, knowing when to start it, when to end it, anything like that, I want you to know that next week I will be releasing a video that goes even more in depth on this particular subject. As I started talking, I realized I was like, wow, this is a whole nother 10, 15 minutes of information I could be giving. So I'm going to make it short and sweet, but just realize if this is something you're interested in learning more about, I'm going to be giving you a lot more information next week. So let's kind of go with the first half of these scenes. So the very first one is the opening image, and this is going to be one to five percent of your story, your overall word count. So for me, I think it was about 800 words, 850 words. Not quite a chapter. I try and keep my chapters around the average of 2,500 words. I have chapters as low as 1,600 words. I have chapters as long as uh, 4,000 words, but I usually try and keep it within that 2,500 range. So 800, definitely way too short, in my opinion, for my particular novel. So then I also know I can put the theme stated in here. And the next is like my very first setup. So I was talking about, you know, Naeli, it shows her in this war camp. She's fighting with her father. She sees the cost of failure. So once I show what her cost of failure is, it's very important for me to show her making a decision. So I don't end the chapter at her being like, oh my gosh, this is the cost of failure. Again, that could be a chapter break if you have one point of view and this is all a little bit longer. But like I said, I think Naeli has 55,000 words dedicated to her. So her, so I have to be a little more compact with everything. I personally, I wanted her to see what failure was. What did failure look like? I wanted her to internalize it and make a decision. That decision is where I cut the chapter off at. So in my particular story, the reader is like, oh no, she's making the wrong choice. Like I get why she's doing it. It's not because she's stupid, but this could go like really bad for her, dude. Well, dude, it really does go bad for her but I'm making sure she doesn't look stupid by doing this thing that seems really like a really bad idea because I've made her golden ticket totally worth the risk. 
and I cut it off. The next chapter is, like I said, it's going to be a much shorter chapter. So I think this 16 to 1800 words for me is her failure, right? So that's kind of how you do it is you kind of group into things and you say, okay, this is something that I want to go fast. Is this something that I want to go slow? Is this something where I can take a few different things and put them all in one? Because you can have three, four or five scenes within one chapter. That's fine. You can make three weeks pass in the first chapter. What's important is, is that you're not slowing down your story because you feel like you have to slow it down and show what three weeks of travel looks like. I mean, don't, don't do that. What's up guys? Welcome to the Zoe Marley channel. I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I'm sick <laughs> All right, we are now recording. Wait, I want you to be into the video. I will be in the video with you, baby. I promise you. 